Hey everyone, I had some requests. People want to know how do I install AIs locally on my computer? Olama will do everything you need to do locally on your computer, assuming your computer can handle it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install and run Olama and download models, how to run open web UIs so you can chat with those models on your computer just like it's Claude or ChatGPT. Then I'm going to show you how to create two basic scripts, a chatbot, and a data analyzer and summarizer for something like a directory build or data scrape where you need to take the data and then take it another step using a local LLM could save you a lot of money and time if your computer can handle it and it's super easy. So let's get started. So all you're gonna need for this tutorial is a browser window, a terminal window, and because I wanna show you how easy it is to connect to the Olama API, I have a cursor window open. We're gonna make a basic project so you can see how you can integrate it into your project. So let's get started. You're going to go to olama.com. You click this download button. Boom. You download it for your platform, and then you're going to install it. Then you can go to your terminal once that's installed. Type in olama, and nothing's there. But you can see that it is an app. It's going to show you the basic commands you can use. Olama list. And here it's going to show me all of the models I've installed so far. See, Nomic, Embed, Text, Latest, Dolphin 3, Llama 3.2, Gemma 3, etc. Where do I get these models? Here on Olama.com, you can click Models, and you can see which models are available to download, and you can choose the version of the model that works for your laptop. So I'm running Gemma 4B here. I'm going to Google how much RAM do I need on MacBook Pro M3 Max. Now, this is all fairly complicated because you could be using different hardware, you could be using GPUs, you could be using CPUs, whatever it is, but as you can see here, Gemini 3, 4B, 24 gigabytes of VRAM required. So you can Google the model of your computer, put the name of these models, and see what the recommended amount of RAM is going to be. You got to remember that some of these models, such as Llama 3.3, which I was really excited about, this 70 billion parameter model, which is the smallest one, is 43 gigabytes. You want at least 48 gigabytes of RAM to run this model, probably closer to 64. I only have 36 gigabytes, so I can't run Llama 3.3, so I run Llama 3.2. This 3B model is 2 gigabytes, right? Um, and there's all these different models in here you can play around with. Say you want to install Llama 3.2, you simply copy that code there, right here, and it's going to download and install the model. And I've already got it installed. Send a message. How much RAM should I have to use Llama 3.2? Um, it doesn't even know what long. <laughs> Great first start with the with the open source models, right? Um, but then you can see also I could download DeepSeek or something I don't have on here. And I used to have DeepSeek on here, but I removed it because I learned um, it just wasn't doing very well on my computer. So I can hold down Control or D to exit that, or I could just write by. But I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to paste that DeepSeek command. So I'm going to download the DeepSeek R1. 7b model and you can see how it's downloading that five gigabytes here i could do 8b i could even do 14b on this computer um, but actually i don't even want deep seek on my computer at the moment i've used it for some things i don't have a lot of space on my computer right now so i've removed it so we've got this in the command line the next thing i'm going to show you now is how to open it in an actual web interface that looks very familiar like chat gpt where you can actually choose the model you want to use and lots of other fun things. So what we want to do here is go to openwebui.com. I'm in the documentation here. We're going to click the quick start guide. I don't imagine you're going to have many problems with this because it is pretty simple. I recommend you just use Docker because this is a very quick way of doing it. So to install Docker, I recommend just downloading Docker Desktop. What that will give you is a little interface like this where you can see the different containers running. And you can see the port it's running on. So I've opened Web UI running on port 3000. It's been running for just a few minutes here. You're going to download Docker Desktop and get that installed. Make a basic account. It's very easy. Once we have Docker installed, we're going to copy this here and we're going to paste it into our terminal and press enter. And that is going to download everything. I've already got it up to date here, so that's why there's not much, but you'll see a different screen there. Then you're going to want to run the container and these are the default settings. They work just fine. You copy that, you paste it in, and you press enter, and you're going to end up with exactly what I have here. Open Web UI on port 308080, which is what we see here. If you have all the GPUs and stuff, you probably don't need to be watching this video, but 
Um, there's some other things to do here, but I'm trying to just give you the simplest way to do it. We're going to use the same Olama server. We're not going to change anything. So once that's there, we can access the web UI like that. You're going to need to make an account and log in. And you can see that there's all these other models. And what else you can do is say you do want to use DeepSeek R1 latest. I can type that in here and just click pull. Uh, uh, probably because it's like that. And you see it's downloading the model right here. Like I said, I don't really want to download DeepSeek right now. Real quick, everyone, if you want to vibe code, if you want to build with AI, you need to have competency with the command line. Check out the five-day command line bootcamp below. You'll learn all the basics. And if you stay subscribed afterwards, I send you plenty of more resources to get you started vibe coding on all the levels, not just using Lovable or Bolt or VO or whatever, but actually being able to use cursor, make PRDs with Claude or ChatGPT, and really fine-tune what you're doing. It's great for beginners. See you there. Now back to Olam. Tell me the pros and cons of using local LLMs. You'll see it might be a little slower, kind of fast actually. And you'll see all our chats are going to show up here in the left sidebar, just like all of your other chat interfaces. And you can delete these, you can share them, you can download them, whatever you want to do. This all is kept locally on your computer. So you're owning your data here. These LLMs may have been trained somewhere else. They may have censorship built into them, but no one's taking your data here in your chats. They're staying on your computer. Now, if you don't want censorship, you can do some research and you can see Dolphin Mixthrall here is uncensored, which means they took apart the they took apart the censorship prompts basically. So I could install that here and I could perhaps get some more edgy opinions or more edgy data from my chat. For example, Law X. This is a model you can download that can give me legal advice that ChatGPT would normally probably not want to give me. Here's a marketing expert. Here's Potter Tech Logic. Um, let's see what Potter Tech Logic has to say. What are the pros of using LLMs locally? And you can see how Potter Tech talks a bunch of magical personality. Huh. Now I'll show you real quick. In Open Web UI, you can find different models, functions, and fun stuff. And you can have some fun downloading these, just like I showed you Potter Tech Logic. There's a bunch of little, I wouldn't call them assistants, but characters you can play with. Oh, Trump 9000, a futuristic AI overlord based on the legendary business. <laughs> and you can see that it's using Dolphin Llama 3. It was probably a bit more uncensored, but I think you kind of have an idea now. So finally, I'm going to move us into cursor here, and I've got a blank file here, and I'm just going to say, let's write a chatbot that connects the Olama API locally using Llama 3.2. Now I've got a system prompt in here, well it's a rule really, but I consider it a prompt, that basically has to decide moving forward with every prompt I give it, are we in planner or executor mode? And it always uses this scratch pad markdown file to keep down to write down everything that's going on, everything we're trying to do, so it can stay on, stay on task. So now Cursor has made a plan here in the scratch pad, and I'm not going to review it because this is so simple. So I say, sounds, sounds good, build it. So it's switching to executor mode now, and it's marking that we've already done that. And I'm really trying to get comfortable with this new workflow. It's going to save a lot of time in the long run. So much time. Um, because a lot of times the cursor agent just kind of goes in loops when you don't know what you're doing, like myself, and you're just hoping for the best. So having a status board like this keeps us on track. Not to mention, we can fix any little things that could be off. It's chosen the language, Python. It's researched Olama API. And you'll see that Olama works on localhost, and the API is 11434. So for example, we're here in localhost 3000. If we type in 11434, you'll see Olama is running. And that is the API. So there's no interface there because an API isn't an interface. It's just uh, data. So now we want to run Python Olama client.py. Why is the sky blue? The sky appears blue to our eyes because of a phenomenon called Rayleigh scattering. Okay, so it worked. Make a basic HTML interface for this script. So as this demonstrates, we didn't need to connect to OpenAI or Anthropic or Venice, nothing. We did a local. 
Now, you don't always want to do it locally because you're not going to get the best results. Sometimes you want to use O3. Sometimes you want to use Sonnet 3.7. Sometimes you want to use Gemini. Sometimes you want to use Venice for your image generation, whatever. But this is a great way of going about processing data that you've, been, that you've scraped that then needs to be, for example, filtered or described or summarized, something like that. So we run pip install requirements to install the dependencies here, which I think is just Flask, but maybe not. Then we want to run Python 3 app.py. And you'll see now that we can go to localhost port 5000. And there's our chat. Hello. Why is the sky blue? All right. There it is. <laughs> um, now we can say, why should I use an open source LLM? And here we go. So it's not the cleanest, obviously, and this is probably not an application I would use for anything. But just to show you, this is using Olama. So now we're going to hit this home with a little bit of data that I've scraped for five builders directory. And I'm just going to take a handful of these. I'm going to make a new directory called data. And I'm going to drag it into data. Boom. Got the data. We've got the resources in here. Write a script that analyzes and processes the data in data and write summaries for each export each summary into a single new json file use olama api so you can see it's writing the summarization script and it knows to use localhost 11434 now it's using Llama 3, which is not what we want. So I'm going to have to fix that in the script. So I go to summarize data. We're going to put Llama 3.2. And yes, continue. Remember, we're using Llama 3.2. So what this script I'm having cursor write is going to do is take all the data in this folder, which is just a bunch of Google web results. And it's going to look through them and summarize them using Llama 3.2. Then it's going to put everything in a new file with just the summaries. OK, so now let's uh, run our final step. It's processing everything here. And then it puts everything in summaries output. And there it is. So it shows me what the resource name was, and then the service, the, the summary. Very basic summary here. And if we jump back into the script, we can also see just how when we use any API for any AI, we're going to have a prompt here. So please summarize the following text concisely. And then it just throws in the text to summarize that the script created by aggregating everything inside these JSON files. And it pops that in there. OK, and here's the payload. And all this data is then sent to the API, which is just on our computer in this case. And then it does what we ask it to do. And then the Python script handles the rest. It puts all that summarized, the summaries, that summarized data into this file. And then we have it. So this is a valuable tool to save money and time because it will probably go faster than your API calls as well. So simple enough. I hope if you have any problems, just let me know in the comments. I'll try to help you out. We also have a Discord community called Vibe Builders AI where people like you and me that are just learning this out, figuring it out, we, we share it together. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope it helped. It really is a great thing to have LLMs running on your computer. So if you want to learn more about vibe coding and building like this with AI, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.